Welcome to another tutorial and in this one we're going to be getting into the basic chroma keying setup in Blender 2.69 and as things update in the software we'll see if we can get back to uh, updating these tutorials but at the moment 2.69 does do the same that we need to as the 2.71 and so we'll use this one. Click anywhere to, anywhere to get rid of the splash screen and we're going to go down to this button here to select the movie clip editor which is where we're going to import our footage into Blender. Open button and then we're going to navigate to where our footage is at and we had saved before our footage as 1, 2, 3 just click on 1, open the clip or double click and there we have our footage. We can scroll with our middle scroll button to resize that now in the default opening here we have two uh, windows, this panel here and this side panel here, these are the parameters of the different ones. At the moment this is set for tracking, down here we have different modes, this is the tracking mode, we have mask mode, reconstruction and oops, otherwise we can, with, but we won't be doing that right at the moment, uh, we're just going to do a basic key so we'll just leave it like that, it means that it's now imported. This footage was taken about four years ago and so it's not particularly wonderful but we're going to still rescue it and take a look at your basic chroma key setup. By going to this button here we can go now to our node editor and we have virtually nothing here. This one fooled me for a few days, you need to go down to this button and click it and it will give you use nodes button which we're going to click and backdrop which we're going to click. These two default nodes, this is the composite one which is the rendering sort of connection that whatever you plug into this will get rendered. This one here is for the 3D world that's in Blender and we won't need that so we just select it and press delete and get rid of it. What we will need though is to add our footage so the input down here in the taskbar at the bottom is add then into input and movie clip. It's where we've got our footage. We can scroll on our middle scroll button to make our nodes bigger or smaller and everything that is on this node will also show up in this side panel which once again you can move in and out and click the button to open it and resize it with all the same parameters. If we go to this button here which also shows up on the node you will find the footage that we had imported. You may have imported several different pieces of footage so it is there. We'll check that one and here it is turned up. Now we can't see anything yet so we will have to add an output node, a viewer and put it there and connect the little one that says image button to the viewer and voila we get it. Now if I scroll with my button only the nodes go in and out so you press the V key and it will shrink and the Alt V to go out. I think it's different on a Mac architecture um, computer but there we have that piece of footage. Now this footage we took four years ago is got blobs on it, it's got a gradient in the blue, it's got problems with these uh, eyebrows here and there is some blue in the zipper here which will not disappear but we can still save that. We will do that in later steps but this is the basic keying setup. So if we want to do our keying we're going to add a keying node by going add up to the mat preference and up to keying and that will give us a keying node. While you dragging these around and place them on a wire it will turn orange and you just let it drop and it will connect automatically but you want, might want to connect different parameters so you can also connect those individually and we're going to connect to the top button here and to the viewer so that we can see what we're doing. You can see an immediate key but it's keying on white rather than black because here is the color that is the key color. We will, if we select that and go dropper and go to the node here itself it won't well it has in this case sometimes it doesn't select it, uh, the color that's in there and sometimes you have to connect the node to the viewer so that you can then go and select the color that you want and there it has done that. 
So now we have a key on the blue color. But as I said before, there's actually a gradient in the blue, so it hasn't disappeared it completely. We can fix that, though. If we take the alpha channel here and connect it to the viewer, you will see that we've got the alpha channel. But if we take the keying node and connect it, we now see what the keyer is seeing in the alpha channel. Perfect white is going to be solid, perfect black is going to be transparent, but we've, we've got a bunch of grays in the gradient, so we need to now adjust those. Over in the parameters, which are the same in the node as they are over here, let's shrink that and move it out of the way even. The first thing we're going to look at is the thing called clip black. All of the grays, if we move the slider, the, the grays that are close to the black will be considered black, and those that are in the whites will stay white. And as you see, the white will get more solid, also doing the opposite. Also, you will find that this footage is not too bad for speckling, but you see there's some spots that are turning up here. We can, they're like specks in things like. Adobe After Effects, it's called despeckling to get rid of that, and we can do that with this edge kernel. It says here you can adjust those to what size pixels. Anything that is smaller than that, it will consider transparent. Anything bigger than that, it will make them disappear. See, so it adjusts the size, it defaults at three. And if you then up the tolerance, it will. Anything that is smaller than those tolerances, it will then disappear them. And just for this exercise, let's see what happens. But you use that one to despeckle it. And my black clip is adjusting it so that I can get a good clean key. You'll notice here there are some holes appearing in the white area and they will not disappear no matter what I do because they're basically something blue that is in the zipper. So leave up there. And you'll notice that it, the harder you push it the more it's going to eat those fuzzy bits on his eyebrows. Let's go back to the node and connect the color back into the backdrop and you can see we have a reasonable, uh, a reasonable key. If I go my Alt V to make it bigger you can see that it's not bad, although it has a little bit of uncleanness around the edge there. We could play around with the screen balance to get rid of that by uh, the despilling, should I say. Um, here the factor will reduce how much of the blue that you remove from the color, but the more blue you remove, the less blue, obviously, that changes the color of it, so you want to be reasonably cautious on that one. And the balance, screen despill balance, is between the final one and the original one. You can play around with that to see what sort of color balances you're going to get there to remove some of that blue there. In this one, when we don't have too much spilling there, so it's not a, much of an issue on this piece of footage, but that's something you can play around with. Screen balance is between the original screen and the final screen you can play around that and that adjusts the color a little bit but I don't usually have to adjust that much. Now around there you can still see there's a little bit of an edge, a white or bluey white edge. To get rid of that we can dilate or erode down here in the dilate erode but and it will shrink or grow the alpha mat and eat into the figure. And so you can see here he's starting to look cleaner. Now, if I was to key that onto something else immediately, it's going to be very sharp edged and it will stand out because it will look cut out. So I want to add a little bit of feathering or blur and I maybe put usually two or three pixels of blur for my footage because if you look at any, the sharpest edge like around the eyeball here, you will see that there is probably a two or three pixel blur there, so I want a two or three pixel blur also around there. And shrink it in, and that is looking not too bad. That's a nice clean plate. Okay, 
oh, what do you call it, a key. Next thing is how am I going to put a background into there. I need to add a background, input, say an image or a movie clip, and put it up here. Now there's two ways that we can blend or put a background there. If we open a picture like a grass door, for example this one here, which is going to be looking like that, we've got transparency because it's a PNG. If I now go and get an add color and do a mix node and connect that on, that's going to put in the background, and connect this one here, you'll find that it will mix them together. And if I click this button, it will activate my alpha channel. But you'll notice that in mixing it, it will make one on top of the other. And all this transparent area, a transparent mixing with a blob or a picture, an opaque picture, will make it transparent. So in this case, it will not be very good. If I have another picture, for example, this one, it will uh, put him on top of the picture because there's no transparency there. So if you're going to have a non-transparent one, you can use a mixed node. But if you're going to use a grass door, one with transparency, then it, you can also use an, a color alpha over node. And it will connect the top one there and it will put one on top of the other without cutting out and notice it's all faded it will need its pre-multiply button ticked to give me the right coloring and so there we have one picture on top of the other that's your basic keying setup now to output that you're going to have to connect your Not, um, that's basically connect your the alpha over node also to the composite one. So what we're going to look at here is open this window by dragging it, dragging this one down. We don't need this out scene outline, so I'm going to click this button and go down to image editor, and that's going to give me a preview, if I click render, it's going to give me what's in here or I can choose to see what's in the viewer but I want to see what my re render result is, scroll button I can go out just to make sure I know what I've got. Now notice this picture has nothing, is not all of that picture, this is the actual render result. What's in your uh, background and over in this window here is not necessarily what you see here because if you get a larger picture um, or pictures that are bigger or smaller, it will show you everything that you can work with, but this is the actual output. Here you'll notice we're at 50%, so let's put it at 100%, and now click the render button again, and now it's larger, scroll in, and now I can see that I do have my full final output. That's what's going to be output. I can choose that my frame rate is going to be correct, and then output to where I'm going to go, to output it and in this case I've created the directory 123a because that is what I've got and I've also started a render as a test to go 123a as this is my first pass and accept that and render out as a PNG so it's going to be lossless compression up full and now I can start to render that out now what happens if I want to put that in the background to fill in that piece here? I can take a mix, this mix node that we had here, and I can connect, scrolling in, connect the output of my alpha over to the top button, which is the back of it. Then I can go and add an input node of another image 
and open the other one that we had, which was the cave scene, I think. And then I can connect him into oops into the background. It swapped around. And now when I connect to my viewer and to my output, my uh, composite node, render it, oh, it automatically updated. And now you can see it's got the background in there. So you can do multiple ones there and get creative later on. Now that is a basic key where most things are working. We have problems here with that hole here in his sh uh, shirt and also his eyebrows and the colouring of it is not particularly good. So let's go and attend to that in the next tutorial.